In this video, we're going to install in a bee yard a bee colony that we collected from a cutout up under a mobile home. Normally, I'd like to start from the back and move forward. It's the easiest way to get the comb out. Uh, I'm just not sure how far back this is going to go. This is my buddy Mark, and he's a local beekeeper, and he last night invited me out to a cutout. It was near my home and right up under a mobile home. I'm gonna let Mark explain the process and the steps we took to get those bees into the boxes so that we could install them in the bee yard tonight. So what we did last night, the first thing is we set up around the hive, everything we needed. The cutout table where we were gonna cut and mount the frame, the comb. Uh, we also set up the smoker in case we needed it. We set up the bee vacuum, got suited up. It's important to be ready before you start, even if you don't need the equipment, because when you do need it, you don't have the time to put it together. The equipment that we got set up ready for this extraction today is the vacuum. And the vacuum has been modified so that we don't suck the ABs faster than they can fly, which is about 15 miles an hour, so it's set to about 10 miles an hour. The bees will be sucked into the, this new size box with the screen on top, and it's designed so that I can put a fan on top of it to keep them cool during transport. What we also got set up are frames. So we have these frames set up to put the comb in that we cut out. Uh, it's got string on the back to provide some support and then the elastic bands to hold it in place. And as soon as the bees have actually welded the wax to the frame, they chew through the elastic and the string and I find them pulling it out of the hive at the bottom. We've got uh, two bu buckets set up, one for surplus honey and one for comb that I can't use. We absolutely will be suiting up for this one. The bees are already aware of our presence and Mark has that smoke sent down there just to start wafting smoke up into the area. Sometimes the bees here in South Texas can be a bit testy so we're just going to go in prepared with smoke and suits. So the first thing we did underneath the smoke a little bit underneath the house. So the bees are over here. And here. We then cut away the uh, wire and the covering and the insulation that was hiding the hive, which was uh, fastened to the floor of the mobile home. Uh, we then uh, decided through odds, I think, uh, who was going to do the cutout, who was going to do the mounting. Uh, Blake volunteered to help to cut out the comb. I'd like to start from the back and move forward. It's the easiest way to get the comb out. Uh, I'm just not sure how far back this is going to go. As we cut it out, he handed it to me, and then I took the comb. The, I had one frame of just honey as food, honey and uh, pollen for the bees. First bit, predominantly kept honey. All the rest I cut the brood out and mounted the brood into frames. So we ended up with four solid frames of brood from that hive. One solid frame of honey, which was the food for the bees. And the rest we separated into honey, which we will then feed back to the hive over the next couple of weeks. And then the comb, which we would then melt down and use as a base or foundation for future, future hives. During the episode, uh, we constantly sucked up the bees as they collected it. So the trick is you get the um, guard bees first, and once you've got them in the uh, vacuum, then it's not too much of a problem after that. Uh, as they congregated around we were working, we sucked those up. Uh, we left some of the bees on the comb to look after the brood when we put them in the box. Mm. Yeah, we have a frame that's now spliced together. It'll go into the nuke. 
predominantly we've tried to save the brood. Uh, when we finally finished with that, we then cleaned up the area that we had cut out, removed all the remaining comb, uh, checked that there wasn't clumps of bees around, and we left the vacuum clean running because once you get the bees in a confined space like that, there's a great chance of them overheating, particularly in our climate down here. So once you get them in there, you have to keep that vacuum going to provide the through draft. After we cleaned up, we looked for clumps of bees uh, to see whether where the queen was, because you generally don't see the queen during the cutout. So far, we pulled out all those combs. That's why he's been putting in the frames. And there's two little ones left. I kind of suspect that the queen navigated back this way because I saw some bees going uh, in a large group back that direction. Uh, we did notice the bees were congregating around the exhaust of the bee vacuum, which was a good indication that the queen was in there. And both Blake and I did smell the queen in the exhaust, so we knew that she was in the uh, vacuum already. The queen's in there. I can smell her. I thought I smelled that yep. too. She's in the vacuum. Yeah, thank goodness. Sweet banana smells like danger, but what we're smelling now is more of a floral flower, yeah. rose type yeah, smell. Yeah, rosy floral yeah. smell. Yeah, exactly. That's the queen. Uh, we continued over the next half hour or so of cleaning up, and every time we got a clump of bees together, we just sucked them up into the vacuum to maximize the number of bees we removed. When we left the site, uh, there, there was no comb left there. There were very few bees left, and this was now in the evening, so a couple bees would start foraging, would come back in the morning. But for all intents and purposes, there was 90 plus percent of the bees we had taken away with us. Uh, we informed the homeowner that there would be bees around for the next 24 to 48 hours. Some of it will be bees coming in to see what they could rob, and the rest will be the foragers that weren't there last night. And those would then uh, leave the area because they knew there would be nothing left for them, and they would go and find another hive to go and join. Get a wet washcloth to wipe my hands off because it's covered in honey. The bees were not quite as aggressive as I expected them to be. They were actually quite docile. We didn't go directly to the apiary, which I would normally do, but at that stage it was late in the evening and our families were calling us. Mm -hmm. So we had to take a break and decided that we would come and put the bees in the apiary this afternoon. So the setup you see in front of you is a nuke box which has the five frames of brood that we cut out yesterday and mounted in the frames. And on the top here is my bee vacuum. Now this is a nuke box bee vacuum. And I deliberately have it this size so that I can put it on top of a nuke box. Whereas I use a 10 frame bee, uh, bee vacuum, it wouldn't fit and I'd have to have a lot of empty frames in a bottom box which means that's real estate that could be taken over by other things. This way we can transfer directly. If I happen to know we've got a really big swarm or a cutout I'm going to do, then I will use a 10 frame box because then I'll know I'll have 10 frames in the bottom. In here we have the pipe entrance which now has a screen in front. This provides air inside so they can cool themselves. 
This is the board that is underneath that seals the bottom. So I've, I've pulled this board halfway out and it's now provided free access from the bottom to the top or the top of the bottom. I've put the lid on here because if I don't put the lid on, the bees go for the light and they'll all be in the top and they'll never go down to the bottom. So I put this lid on top, this provides insulation, cuts out the light and the bees will migrate to the bottom of the bottom box. What will happen now, we'll leave it like this overnight. Tomorrow morning we'll come back and early we will take this box off. Most of the bees would have migrated to the bottom. The couple that haven't we will shake out and we will put the insulated lid on top of the five frame box. I will leave that for that purpose probably for the next day or so to them to settle down. And because I know that I have five frames of brood and no space for them to put honey or uh, <laughs> new brood or nectar in there, I'm going to put another five frame nuke on top here uh, with empty frames drawn but empty frames for them. And they will stay there now probably for the next week, two weeks. And after that, if they have acclimatized, we'll then move them into a 10 frame box. Bee colonies that make their hives in homes, in the walls or in the, the eaves or in the floors of homes are often destroyed. Homeowners have to make a choice. They can't just live with the bees destroying their home. So, do you call an exterminator to get rid of the bees? That's an easy choice. Or do you search for a local beekeeper who's willing to come out, take the time to take that colony out of the, the floor or the wall and place them somewhere else to where they can live and thrive. I applaud this homeowner for making the choice to find a beekeeper. Here on the Daddy Curbs farm in the next episode of beekeeping, we're gonna be taking this extractor out into the bee yard and extracting honey right there in the field. That could get messy. Hey, I believe everyone has a story and every story counts. Thank you so much for being a part of my story and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.